can talk to him once. Sir, you have this one? No, that I, what I want to have some infection. Hello? Audible. <clears throat> Hello? So I welcome uh, everybody on the fourth day of uh, the program. Uh, today's uh, first speaker would be Professor M. N. Srihari. He is the Chief Executive Officer currently of uh, Tex. So, uh, a brief introduction about uh, Professor M. N. Srihari. Uh, sir has over 42 years of experience as a professor in Civil Engineering Department in transportation wing. He was working at uh, MS Ramaya Institute of Technology as professor before joining RV College of Engineering, Bangalore in 2009 as professor for postgraduate studies for highway technology, besides being the visiting professor to various technical institutions and universities in India. Uh, currently, he is working as chief executive officer, CEO for MS uh, Consortium of Infrastructure Engineers and Messrs. Intelligent Traffic Solutions, headquartered in Bangalore. He has been actively involved in research since 1976 and published over 115 research papers in various international journals, conferences, and seminars. During this period, he has authored around 12 textbooks in engineering covering basics for engineering students. He has worked as traffic engineering advisor and consultant to several corporate large scale builders in India for their various projects. He has also supervised over 2000 projects related to traffic, transportation and infrastructure, traffic impact assessment and road safety. At the same time, he has delivered more than 1100 technical lectures at various institutions in India and abroad. He is the founder chairman of traffic engineers and safety trainers and consistently working in the field of traffic and road safety. During this time, he has educated over 4.5 lakh road users on road safety. In the year 2004, he became the advisor to the government of Karnataka, traffic, transportation and infrastructure and, and an expert member of Bangalore infrastructure development. Sir is a member to more than 12 professional bodies like Institution of Engineers, IE, Indian Roads Congress, IRC, Indian Road Transport, IRT, Indian Society of Technical Education, IST, and several others. He has also been an advisor to the government of Maharashtra and the government of Goa for the monorail project and the road connectivity under JNURM schemes. And he has been uh, actively advising the chief ministers of these states. He is presently advising the National Highways Authority of India for road safety initiatives and has conducted a road safety auditing for more than 50 national highways across India as a road safety expert. Presently, he is associated in writing the road safety manual and advising allied Boston company for initiating ISO and road safety requirements for PWDs. He's also engaged in the development of smart cities, 
smart temple towns and smart mobility plans in india besides this the cochin smart city in 2013 zuari city in goa in 2014 and yamignaru in andhra pradesh as a smart town in 2014 apart from shri kshetra dharmasthala as a smart temple town he is a board of studies member to jss university popularly known as sjc for ug and pg studies the sdm autonomous institution the dharwad and also for vvit mysore sir has received several awards and honors such as best engineer for bangalore 2000 man of the year for india 2009 karnataka padma bhushan award for the state government in 2008 he is also honored by the state government for best engineering services in 2000 and many many more in the year 2000 he started the consortium of infrastructure engineers serving consultancy services in traffic and transportation engineering and has been the chief executive officer of this organization presently with all this i welcome professor mn srihari to take over the program and be with us for the next thank you very much sir <laughs> thank you very much for a, a very good uh, introduction about me so the great of great of you sir yes and uh, i think i am sure my screen has been shared now yes sir yes sir. is it okay yes yes is it possible to see yes sir okay so today's traffic is a, a very very important traffic or the subject matter for the entire india as most of the cities are developing or in a developmental stage in which general any problem you ask in any city by anybody they'll say only one problem they're facing it'll be traffic problem traffic snarls delays congestion and accidents even world bank and every other agency the international bodies they're all worried about the road accident happening not only in india many third world countries in this direction the best management is to be necessary somewhere identifying all the problems studying all the problem and later on getting into the how, how we should go for that so in this direction so a brief introduction about the nct should be studied and we'll try to give it yeah <clears throat> yeah now with this uh, i welcome all the faculty members coming from various engineering colleges in india of course basically it must be more in the south southern india for this uh, a beautiful fdb program of course at msrit which i was also happened to be there at msrit for more than 45 46 years and it was very well known institution in india one of the best institution in karnataka also Uh, for all uh, the teachers and qualified uh, exposure and informatics teachers also so this is a good opportunity for me also to give a lecture for the faculties of course this may not be the first one maybe several things of that so so this will be uh, most things we'll try to do that one now uh, next Yeah. so in, in general, all the technical institution generally where civil engineering is offered will a sound not in highway transport engineering and particularly traffic and transportation engineering if i what happened here the subject traffic transportation has come little late whereas in which every uh, engineer will know about highway construction road construction and also basically using the help of soil mechanics geotechnical engineering and testing lab and other things the traffic and transportation transportation is the latest of course the traffic is started because whenever the vehicle is started moving on the road the traffic it constitute a traffic the problems are also cropping in day in day out when the traffic volume increases pavement is getting failed due to axle load with all the problems the traffic and transportation taken a prime phase in the planning and design of roads as well as the how to manage the traffic for the at present and also the future by organizing 
various multimodal transportation network for planning also. So generally any well-balanced city should have a master plan for the future, maybe 2015, 2030, 2045, even Karnataka or Bangalore also, we have master plans for 2031 now, 2015 is over already. And then we have to plan for 2050 also. Like that, a sound master plan identifying the potential growth of various places, various locations, and also the trap trip generation, trip attraction, all the center route preferred, that is called route assignment, and motor split also. All the things are very much essential to understand. So this is how it should be. The information what I'm going to talk today will covering the follow covering the following in things. One understanding the road hierarchy and road network. First of all, as civil engineer or highway engineer, we should understand what are the various type of road available. And also, as a student, when we want to deliver lecture for students, we have to be in a commanding position to explain this road network also. And Pedestrian requirement and safety is the most important. We are giving more impetus or more focus on the pedestrian safety because the, most of the uh, people getting killed on our roads are pedestrians. That's why they're called as vulnerable road users. We are you, vulnerable road users. And around 38% of the people getting killed in our roads are pedestrians, apart from the vehicular accidents. And the issue now cropped in recently, as well as from the under five, 10 years back, is also the parking and practices for parking. Because road is meant for traffic movement. Footpath is meant for the pedestrian movement safely. Whereas parking shall not be allowed at any cost on the road. Because road infrastructure, we cannot forego for parking of the vehicles. It's a dead death system it is. So hence, a lot of studies should be made even for any city. In India, there's a problem will be every city, we have a lot of vehicles parked in that. How to remove, what are the things, what are the parking best practices we have, very quick retrieval of vehicles is also studied here, along with the safety. And next, road safety and importance. And every day, in fact, we are killing in India almost the same numbers as that of a world war. Is it really happening or why it should happen? Who are the people, unfortunate people getting killed? What is the compensation given to them? It's also very, very important because our two to 3% of GDP is just wasted for paying compensation to the accident victims, which is very, very dangerous for any developing country. That means 2% to 3% of the GDP getting wasted just for paying compensation then the next question comes, why are people getting killed on our roads? What is the mistake of our roads? What are plannings to be required actually for our roads? And how to make roads safer, driver safer, vehicle safer? All these things should be concurrently addressed in the lecture or in the, the program. And five, next will be the road signs and signages. Because until unless our road signs and signages are proper of international standard, and also will also will give a lot of the guidance for the drivers or road users. And that is also very important. Putting all these studies, the planning in urban area will come into picture. And then the planning of the urban area should be projected for next 15 years, 20 years. And what is necessary for that year, we should plan now itself. And slowly we should practice and we should construct it. We should give a provision for such requirement also. But then next question comes, what is the problem at urban level? You all know, every one of you quite uh, agree for that. The growth of population and vehicles are increasing day by day. And in which India, a special case, and we have population growth is one of the biggest challenge, biggest problem. And as, as when the population grows, the trips also grow for their either for jobs or for their work or any other requirement. And obviously, number of vehicles also getting increased day by day. In fact, Bangalore growing a high registered vehicles every year, year after year, except 
this one or two years where we have a pandemic problem, the vehicles are not grown much. But now, again, it has picked up. The vehicles are growing very, very fast. And obviously, until unless we put plug somewhere, the vehicle growth, our roads cannot sustain. While road planning, vehicles planning, vehicle growth is also very important input to be taken. Horizontal and vertical growth of buildings is quite obvious. Whenever NPD coming to Bangalore, maybe perhaps all over India, not only in India, but people coming all over the world also to Bangalore as one of the destination place to live, the quality life, whatever it could be. So the urban sprawl is increasing day by day. And obviously, we're meeting the requirement of roads, transportation, water, power, and everything, safety, everything is a question mark in this growing trend. And obviously, the next will be the limitation of mobility of vehicular traffic in cities and towns. All the roads are built. Roads are built long back. We don't have provision for widening also. So in this scenario, how the mobility or movement of people, men and material will take place is also very, very important. Any number of vehicles we add onto the road will not solve this problem until unless we plan for the mass transportation. The multimodal integration, mass transportation, built-in safety, there's some of the important things, important factors we have to plan, we have to consider for the planning. Next, and the thing is the mass transportation, if you take like metro, monorail, or any other the, uh, transportation system underground or above the ground, the next question comes, the accessibility and last mile connectivity. Ultimately, our people lost the walking thing at all on our roads, or even for the going to the next road, we're trying to depend upon a vehicle. So in such a scenario, the accessible how easily, how fast, how quickly we get the accessibility or mode of transportation or public transportation is important. We need the transportation from door to door also. The last mile connectivity is very, very important there because ultimately after getting down from a mass transportation like metro rail or monorail, all bus system, how the people will commute to the last mile or at the same time, the first mile also. So the first mile and the last mile connectivity is a crucial, important planning stage whenever we plan for the mass transportation net, network. Next, the weak and poor connectivity of PTS. PTS means public transport system. So when ultimately people start, depending on the public transport system, obviously the connectivity, travel time, waiting time, all these things will come into picture. Because any public transportation to grow, to have a good name for the future transportation network, we have to see that the connectivity should be very good. At all nook and corners, we should be able to connect it. In a quick time, we should take it. Safely, we should be taken. And all these things are very much necessary. These problems, which identified some of the problems, of course, plenty of other problems, too, joins these lines or these groups, whereas, the important points I discussed with respect to transportation for at the urban level, it leads to obviously leads to congestion, delays, higher fuel costs, higher operating costs, higher travel time, and higher whatever all the built-in costs will be consumed. So, in one way, the poor transportation or poor transport connectivity in urban areas will lead to congestion and road occupancy also covered. Lot of delays happening at junctions, even at roads by mixed transportation. And a higher fuel is also very important because whenever there is optimal speed, we don't move. Obviously, the fuel consumption is also more, travel time is more, and obviously the travel cost becomes more for the operation. Next, obviously, once all these things happen, these problems, obviously the image on the public transportation will go down and the public dissatisfaction starts more and more because people seldom use the public transport. So hence, they're very, very careful. They have to, otherwise they have to bring their own vehicle. Even if they bring their own vehicle, obviously the travel time also increases. Third will be environmental pollution. Obviously, whenever we don't maintain a good vehicle, a good condition, and also because of the fuel, what we're using, 
other than the electric fuel, obviously the environment pollution also increasing day by day. Bangalore is also not far from that. And even Delhi is one of the uh, hope, uh, bad cities as far as environmental pollution is concerned. Bangalore also fast approaching. Next, parking issues and challenges. This will dealt in detail later. And threat to road safety. Obviously, the highlighting main thing will be the road safety. Number of people are getting killed in our roads and getting injured and also a lot of compensation paid for them through the insurance agencies. That is also to be considered. Now, this is the very important stage uh, we have to think about will be the, how the vehicles are the shared on our Indian roads. Uh, this is uh, very important for the Bangalore city, which I'm giving. This will be helpful. A lot of people for doing research also. Uh, we have to form this table to appeal the government or appeal the mass transportation. The slow moving vehicles growing, which was higher in 1981, 70% like jet cars and bullet cars and cycle, cycle rickshaws. So those things in the 80s were more, more in plenty. Whereas this drastically has come down to 20% in 1991 after a decade because of number of private companies, including the IT companies, are cropped in any, any major cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Delhi, Chennai, Calcutta, Mumbai, Pune, and all these places. So you can see a drastical change of almost 50% between the 10 years, 81 to 91. Whereas it has further drops down narrowly for a single digit of 5% in 2001. At most, everyone starts owning the vehicle. A lot of vehicle manufacturing companies have dropped in Karnataka or India. So this made everyone to own their vehicles. And obviously, the slow moving vehicle slowly almost come to the stage of vanishing. In 2011, not much difference, 5 to 4. And in 2021, we stand is 4.67 because people started using more cycles now, bicycles and other slow moving vehicles uh, because of uh, their own transportation, their own health, and their own safety, and also not bearing the pollution. At the same time, how the two wheelers have grown in India, the same situation for Bangalore also. It started from 5%, which was not there. On earlier days, not many two-wheelers were there, where people are not, not manufacturing. Also, we have Vespa, we have a Lambretta, which you highlight here, the two type of vehicles. And now it has increased to 35%, 95 And finally, today, one of the highest, uh, the modal split will be two-wheelers, and it is almost stands at 70%. Every house, every person, every male or female will have a two-wheeler nowadays. Men will have motorbikes and ladies will have two wheelers. And this is uh, now at most we are projecting it may reach maximum of 75%, not beyond that one. Auto rickshaws, which was there as a mass little intermediate public transport of those days, which was start uh, from 10% highest and it has reached to 20% double in 2001 because of not having much the other trans private transport. This has been brought down now at almost up to 4.10. And now the 2022, it has further come down up to 3.96% in 2022, latest this uh, growth. And cars and tempos, this has been growing now because number of cars manufacturing companies has come to India, basically having a lot of manufacturing in Delhi, even Hyderabad, that's Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana, we have a lot of things. So with this Kia has come and a lot of other things have come into the market. So this has been increased, the cars and tempos. Now in the 2022, it's almost reaching 20 percent. It is 20 uh, percent. Now the 2021, it has seen highest of 25 percent, it has brought down to 20 percent. Now the trend is because we have introduced also in various cities, the metro. The metro made many people to leave the car because the fuel consumption is more and time taken was more. So with this, there's a reduction in four wheelers, obviously from 25 to 19, 
Further, this may reduce in the coming years. It may be to uh, 15 percent and 10 percent, which are looking shortly for 2025. So the cost steps will come down. And see, on the other hand, though we call buses, which is a mass transport, will be having 10 percent, which was not at all a good one in 1981 because not much, much buses we have seen. And whereas it has brought down to 2.1% as the public transport. Now we are looking for electrical buses also to reduce the fuel, reduce the noise pollution. In Bangalore also we have ordered around 200 electrical buses and shortly the China vehicles are in also local made Tata company vehicles, electric buses uh, is also coming up shortly. See here now, the car can take maximum three to four people. In average, in the urban areas, the average carrying capacity of a car is 1.64 average in urban area. Whereas, if you happen to go to IT corridors, so we will have only 1.1 occupancy, almost 1% 1 will travel by car, which is uneconomical for running the car with high petrol consumption, highest delays and other things also. That's how many of the people, they've shifted from cars to the uh, this thing, uh, buses and buses to metro also now. One car or the 40 to 50 car occupants is equal to one bus. Similarly, 15 bus occupancy will be equal to a one metro. So obviously by looking at the mass transportation requirement, obviously metro will be more beneficial and for taking men, of course not materials from one place to other place in a proper thing. Now a days we are in the plan and we are in the frequency mode to grow our metro transportation network to all places and by developing the last mile and first mile connectivity and also competitive, the, the ticketing also, they're planning. And we want to integrate at large later part of this, this year or next year, all the various transportation of mass transportation and also intermediate public transportation and also parking place for the pri private vehicles to come park and ride things. is also coming up in nature. So now the type of road and rider hierarchy, of course, I'm sure all of all the faculties were highly educated, highly qualified faculty, the experienced faculty, they all know very well. In, the, uh, in India, we had earlier, we have highways, in the highways, we have two type of highways were there. The, the highways we have, these national highways and state highways. And whereas next comes, the major district road or MDR, in our earlier days, we used to call MDR. When I was a student in 1960s, so we used to call that as MDR, ODR, VR, and all these things. And nowadays, we are converting this to national, the highways to the various different things like freeways and expressways. Freeways is the one which have no stop at all on a dedicated route network. The expressways, which have a fewer fewer class sections are getting into the different levels. We have express space. And in the major district road, we be called as arterial road and sub arterial. Other district roads are defined as roads only. And village roads, we have a collector roads or streets and local street or roads like that. This is how the hierarchy has come for the earlier days. And now is a new hierarchy of the roads starting from the freeways. Even USA and other such places in China, USA, Japan, you can all be find the freeways. All the highways are made as freeways and also called as expressways also. We're also constructing expressways in India. Freeways has yet to come. We have now this in that uh, UP also one free Amuna, trans Amuna road highways there. And collector street and all the things started in USA. And the same thing also we are using the word in our Indian roads also. So these are some of the standards and specification. Of course, the all the width of the road carriageway is worked out based on the vehicle dimensions. Vehicle manufacturer throughout the world will have a uniform standard, and the single lane the carriageway will be having 3.75 meter. This is a carriageway only, which is for one-way traffic. Two lane, it will be not simply at two times the one-way traffic. It is becoming 7.5. Thereby, two ways will have. Each single way is equal to 3.5 meters. 
and 7.5 meter we call that as with curb because we have only two lane with a curb road so we have 7.5 meter use for the curb 0.5 meters three lane 10.5 meter multiple of 3.5 meters three lanes four lane is a multiple of the this 3.5 meter it become so 14 meter two plus two or the four lane carriage way so in addition to that more than four lane we can have we can also have what is called as a median because we are giving one lane for overtaking also or in case of emergency also so we are going to operate it by the four lane and above we have to give what is called as a median maybe even starting from 50 centimeter we can go for three meter we can go for four meter even for the our highways also the cycle lanes nowadays we are creating more and more cycle lanes there is two meter for two-way travel cycling and exclusive bus lane minimum three meter which are operating for the brt system so this is the uh, pictorial representation of the collector street is a typical us it is they have brought it 80 years back or 100 years back itself the collector street uh, the local street where vehicles used to collect it which is given for every 50 meter in between 50 meter we have two sides 25 meter and 25 meter facing both the roads whereas it connects obviously to the local street local street are constructed taking all the vehicle from collected street to the local street which is at every 500 meter half half kilometer you have to construct it number of local street will also connect it to what is called as the subarterial road which is constructed at every two kilometer this is the copy book style uh, road formation or hierarchy of road in us now even today uh, after this we try to take go for the arterial road which also called as highways in india at every five five kilometer highways also to be constructed for the benefit of people to reach different destination points so generally there is no direct connectivity to the arterial road or the highway so it will be connected by grade separator or underpasses. So this is a very, very important because no slow, mo slow moving vehicle can directly come to the arterial road or a highway. It's like cycles, cycle rickshaws and auto rickshaws. And even some places in India, we don't want to allow two wheelers also for the expressways or other things. So even two wheelers also is banned. Auto rickshaws are banned like that. So this is the typical grid pattern of road which are followed in uk or in usa also is called as a grid iron pattern which the roads are parallel and perpendicular particularly one side we have a sea like chennai mumbai and also we have calcutta all such places so we can have one side sea or one side water or one side river in such a places all the roads are originated from the perpendicular to the we see course or the river and also the parallel to the sea perpendicular and parallel i'm uh, sorry this uh, parallel and perpendicular like that so these are the called as the grid iron road pattern of road network this will be done for that thing now you can this is one of the classic example will be the england uh, the london it is so london city we have thames river and we have city grown in both the direction and basically all these roads will be the parallel road and perpendicular road for the transportation network. All systematic road, no road is widening is required because already many roads are widened, keeping in the future requirement also. In India, we, because our economic not that strong earlier, we used to grow roads only calculating that day's traffic or a previous day's traffic only. So this is the typical highway. Uh, I can also call this as partly an expressway, national highway with median. The median generally it is kept open or we have small plantation. The idea of growing plantation such that its height should shall not be, I'm using the word shall, shall not be more than one meter to 1.2 meter because opposite vehicle light should not fall on our eye. We cannot or we should not grow any trees on the median. Any tree, if you grow, if you have any light, the light will fall on to the uh, this uh, tree branches only, not onto the road. 
So hence, please take all the planners off if you happen to use the consultancy work in your lifetime for any purpose. Please advise any government or any other body not to grow trees on the footpath or on the median. Because these generally lightings are very good in India, most of the cities. But unfortunately, these lightings falling on the tree branches, ultimately the road will be dark. We want road to get eliminated when the weather is urban road or in highway also. For highways, we don't put any road, I mean street lighting, but anyway, wherever the lighting is there, care should be taken. We can go only plantation of not more than 1.2 meter height so that opposite vehicle light should not fall on the driver's height. This is what the requirement. So this is how we go for three plus three lanes, the our highways, which is a constructed by CC pavement also, which all 3.5 meter wide, which have a, some reserve land also at the ends also reserve land, so that the vehicle can come to refuge, little refuge when it want not going on very very slow. And next we have the median here. We have the curved stone, well painted, either black and white. We can paint it every 10 centimeter width of each band, and also we can put it for. The yellow and white also nowadays you can go also and then neatly the center line of the roads will be marked and you can have to put what is called as the road struts also for the center line. All the broken white lines we have to put the things will be the white or yellow. Yellow is caution, white is the lane difference whereas the edge lines it generally it can be yellow or it can be the white continuous line with red struts. This, this is one edge for the pavement the other edge of the pavement, other side of the road. So always the pavement edges, we have to go for the red uh, marking or red light streets, and also we have to go for the yellow lighting or yellow, what is called as the studs. See, this is the other red line, this marking full white we have to go. Here, this road is not, of course, India. We don't find this kind of roads in India, the last one, completely marked right of way. What does it indicate? This indicates a good road, in which driver need not depend upon any sign, signages, sign convention. He can read everything. He can drive it without. In India, this will never happen. If you happen to go to village, no marking will be there in the road. And we will get lost soon. No signboards also. No advanced signboards for us to understand. So if you ask somebody, lot of people assemble there in village there, they come and show everywhere, go up, go left, go right, and misguiding, and finally telling go up only. Whereas India, we believe mostly the villagers to show our road and other things. Where other countries, population being very, very less, every inch of the road is marked precisely to guide the driver. This make a driver to go precisely and follow the instruction, follow the controls of cameras, lightings and instruction, sign, signages, mandatory signs and everything. This is how our roads look like to be. It's a smart roads, we're also planning this kind of solutions also. The islands created for the emergencies, other things also. See, this is one of the roads we have, we have designed also. My company, we have designed also. The scientific design of roads, footpaths and junctions, and no, it should, a vehicle should not come and take a turn on the right angle. Right angle turning is always dangerous for, to join for any road. We have to create an additional road to the left, free left road. Slowly it can merge into the traffic. So this kind of planning is very much essential. And by creating the island, getting separation from the true traffic as well as left turn traffic. Same thing for the right turn traffic, right turn traffic also, turn traffic. Like that, we have to plan, stop plan should be given, sign, signages and traffic lights also we can put on the islands here. And obviously, this is the safer road for operation. So we have to create some kind of opening of the median also. We have to have a signboards for that also. This opening will help you to take a U-turn back to the road. So this is not, of course, this below road is in this, we have created this road, not in India, of course. This is created in Kuala Lumpur city. So this is how a well-planned, well-marked road, how it looks like that with a lot of sign signages for a highway we created in India only. This is the national highway number four. This goes from Chennai to the Calcutta. Near Guntur, we created 
are near before Vijayawada. We are created myself in that. See, the right of way, which is a very important term, everyone should know, every teacher should know. It includes the carriageway, footpath, shoulders, and also we have to have what is called as a drainage system and measured from property line to property line is called as the right of way. The right of way standard, don't change the standard as per IRC. IRC already made a lot of standards with the help of CRRI. They made a lot of standards. It starts, the right of way starts from nine meters. So there are two lanes and 12 meters, 18 meters, 20 meters, 24 meters, 30 meters. Now we have 45 meters, 60 meters right of way. So all these roads are also very important. We don't make it even uh, when I visited the Andhra Pradesh, Amaravati, which is supposed to be the smart city on those days, five years back, when I visited for the inspection, the people designed uh, generally for 15 meters or 18.25 meters and all. Don't change the design at all. The hierarchy of the road, road width must be followed in totality. We should not violate the norms of Indian Road Congress because it is a legal practice also it is. The next will be you can go up to 45 meters also. We can go to 100 meters because the peripheral road in Bangalore, which is coming up, we wanted to plan for 110 meters, but we could not achieve that because the acquiring the land become a biggest challenge for us. So 45 meters after 30 meters we have, 45 meters we can have service roads, we can have three plus three lanes, main road, arterial road also highways, then it becomes 60 meters we have highways and expressways and 100 meters is the maximum highways or a maximum road width we can take it off, which is not possible in India because they are not afford to construct 100 meters thing now. So preferably four lane carriageway will have median. Generally we can give two plus two lanes in between a median to house the street lighting if required or we have small the grass or small flowery plantation to break the monotony on the road drivers and also they should not grow beyond 1.2 meter height at any case not the trees in fact so median can start from 0.5 meter even we have maximum 12 meter it can be identified in the indian road congress journals or even code of practice it is the 12 meter we right off way if you go, even if you happen to see in Bangalore, we have a nice road, nice arterial road. In this road, we got 12 meter separator or 12 meter median. In this median, why 12 meter? Because we can plan for the future metro transportation or monorail transportation or underground transportation below that, the 12 meter right. So this is where we can plan for the future transportation requirement also, instead of taking the road space. So hence to map plan the metro rail or monorail, we can plan go for this kind of things. So the minimum width of footpath. This is also a very important footpath because ultimately pedestrian will be used the footpath. Footpath is meant for pedestrian sidewalk, not for tailors selling vegetables, fruits, papers, and so many materials. So this is against the Indian Road Congress philosophy of the modern city development also. The footpath now, as per AIRC 2012, we had taken 1.8 meter, which was earlier 1.5 meter. Now it is minimum requirement of a footpath will be 1.8 meter which can accommodate 1890 pedestrian per hour. Generally in India, we satisfy for the level of service C because we are not that luxurious country. The other countries, the footpath is very, very important. They go for 2.5 to 3 meter footpath and they go for level of service A or B. So even like a road, we have a level of service for the footpath also, which generally we don't talk much in Indian condition. In India, giving a footpath itself is a luxury. But giving footpath, obviously, you be kept free, kept open for pedestrian to move safely. That's what it should be. So the minimum recommended is 1.8 meter and don't compromise as when or when you do consultancy work 
for any city development or urban development. For community and residential complex, two meter is required because more pedestrian walk in a residential complex or a community or malls, offices, communities, and such places, a lot of people will walk. Perhaps people who are coming from Bangalore or coming from Hyderabad or Delhi, they might have understood here the community and other public places. We can go even up to three meters if you go for the certain shopping complexes. Connaught places and such places if you go, you can find three meter wide footpath also. Whenever we give three meter wide footpath, obviously the capacity will be increases from 1890 to 25-20 pedestrians per hour. So along with this, it will be very important thing will be but also increase the, the, the curb stone for the footpath because curb stone should get a separation from the carriageway and the footpath. The footpath is a pedestrian walk, a neat laid footpath without tree and all. The tree trunk itself sometimes occupies the footpath and many times two wheelers also goes in the footpath. So we have to barricade the footpath entry by putting bolsters. Bolads we can create it. The bolads will be created every one one meter so the two wheelers also cannot pass in the run in the footpath. That's very, very important. Most of the Bangalore roads now, we are putting bolads also so that to prevent two wheelers to use the footpath and go to the near the junction. See, this is this shown the different uh, width of the sidewalks and also this gives the design flow number of person per hour, B and C, B and C in India. We generally, we talk about level of service C. See, even though this is the Singapore, the Singapore University, National University of Singapore, directly from the pedestrian walk, directly elevated one we created, directly go to the other side. Here, after giving the good footpath, if you allow them to cross the road, number of accidents takes place. So to prevent any road crossing, haphazardly from the pedestrians, we have to complete the, the complete elevated skywalk. It is to cross in from one side of the other road, right? safely for pedestrians. This is very, very important. Or otherwise we have to give the barricades also so that people are there. But I'll show the India how we use it or misuse it. This is India having a number of trees, both sides, the road become dark. In the daytime, sunlight itself become dark like that. How about the night times? So night time, obviously the road will be much more darker. You see here. See, this is an Indian practice. We have a road shared by parking of vehicles. We have the transformer. There's no place at all. The public to walk. People walk on the road itself. See this thing. The other good one will be having a barricaded, even though it is not 1.8 meter, which is available road. The sufficient width is provided 1 meter, 1.2 meter, up to 1.5 meter. Those days, they are clearly barricaded so that pedestrian can safely use the footpath. So next will be regarding the shoulder. What is the shoulder? Shoulder generally will be the road edge, particularly shoulders are given in the suburban area or in highways. Drainage is very, very important, integral part of the road because road, the road should not allow any water to stagnate. Road will see that the paved or pavement's life decreases. So if it separates the aggregate, stripping will occur from the bitumen and the aggregate. So hence, water at any case, water shall not be allowed to give or stay in the pavement. So proper cross slopes or the transfer slope and longitudinal slope is very essential for the drainage should be given on either side. The drainage should be lined so that water should not absorb by the soil. Next comes the individual problem, this is the highest problem throughout India. Every one of us witnessed, every have seen is the parking problem. The off-street parking generally recommended everywhere. In other countries, developed countries like US and all, which we quite often I will also visit. See, on-street parking totally recommended, it will not be there. So in India, we recommend on-street parking. Whereas off-street parking, dedicated place for the parking like four-wheelers and all, because four-wheelers are more in other countries. Obviously, the four-wheeler occupancy on the road is more. Almost three-fourths to one lane, one lane of the width of the road will go for parking itself. 
Can we use crores of rupees to construct a road by just for parking? No, it should not. So we should not give on-street parking at all. Only off-street parking, that to a dedicated place, safe place, should be given for the entry and exit also, along with parking. This is very, very important. Please see that. Don't accept any government agency the talk parking should be given on the road. So next will be always include the norms. Norms is one side to say. Don't look always for the minimum norms. Go for comfortable norms, safe norms. Always in India, all the IS codes, IRC codes, we talk only on the minimum requirement. Even in the minimum requirement, again, we try to bargain. We try to give much more minimum thing, which is not good for the healthy of the things. So always try to give more for the, the minimum requirement. Give comfort, give safety into consideration. Also while giving the parking space, give 10% additional parking for all visitors and also other government people or the other vehicles to people to come. Even a shopping complex we can construct it. We convert the shopping complex underground or the basement for not for parking. We can convert it to the shops also. This is a very, very bad uh, situation. Of course, my main slogan, which all of you also should accept it also, they say road is meant for traffic movement and footpath meant for pedestrian movement, not for parking. This should be a slogan of every planner. Road is meant for traffic and football meant for pedestrian. No bargaining, nowhere here. Fight, try to fight out. Even the court of law also says this. Court of law, jurisdiction also says in that. So we should, there no, should not be any compromise regarding this as planners. Pedestrians, the basic problem pedestrians because they are all called as vulnerable road users. More to the predation which I have seen in highways, killed like animals, like a street dog. Because we are not given ample uh, safe crossovers for pedestrians in highways, even during night times. So all these problems are very common. So pedestrian safety is already at stakes. So hence we have to take care a lot of pedestrians because their life is also very important. This is because inadequate with the footpath, encroachment of footpath, Football occupied a very huge street trams, traffic signboards, electric poles, electric transformers are very common. So this forcing the pedestrian onto the carriageway or to the road by risking their life. So always see that these things, the, any uh, occupation on the footpath should not be there. Tree should don't grow trees. Trees are always parked, so trees planted in the, these parks only, not footpath. Earlier days, Ashoka days, or the old, old, old days, trees are very essential because we didn't have road at all. We have a walkways. Walkways to walk in the hot sun, we used to plant trees. Not for nowadays, because everyone uses the vehicle. Lack of pedestrian safe weather, zebra crossing, refuge island, or high-rise pedestrian crossing. Absence, at, at, or there is no pedestrian signal at all. That means pedestrian, when we want to cross the road in other countries, advanced countries, we have a pedestrian signal, we can press it, cross the road. But unfortunately in India, when we introduce a banner itself near the St. Mark's Hospital, some child, school children, they come and press that uh, signal. So vehicles are all stopped, even there are no pedestrians, so immediately we got removed. It. See, this is the way. See, he even put the barricade, this is where the Indian culture. We try to cross the predicate, climbing, we find pleasure. I have taken a photograph, which I don't want to show it here. Even a lady with putting chapel to that side, she's climbing the, the, these barricades. See how nicely people are enjoying walking in the roads. Even how can they cross it this side? This side we have a height barricade or height median is there. They have to jump the median to other side and moving against the vehicles. It is. See, in children are moving, see, that is a very, very bad situation. This is the Indian scenario. So now, this is the Japanese scenario. The people will, whenever people want to walk, so they created some kind of the, the obstructions created by red light, stop line, so that people can cross safely and road cannot be seen, vehicle will stop. 
So this kind of virtual vertical wall is very much in practice. We are also following with two uh, poles of the uh, this LEDs poles with automation. Definitely, it's possible. Indian technology is also very strong, but we are not using that one. So this kind of these clearances is very much needed for pedestrian to cross. See, nowadays I have myself wanted to plan for this one with this all fiber materials. This fiber materials, we can put it instead of curb stones, we can put the fiber materials at the junction, at the circles here. So we can, whenever when the pedestrian vehicle green is given, we can see that a green bulb eliminate within the fiber. So the green means vehicle to move. At the same time, the vehicle will be stopped here. The vehicle will be stopped here. The vehicle can be stopped here by using the red LED lights. So this lighting system, whenever it, it is attached to a signal also, when the signal shows red for the vehicle, so where, that means red for the vehicle means pedestrian green cross. So for pedestrian, the green light will be shown. Whenever the vehicle to stop or pedestrian to stop, vehicle will be given green like that. We can plan this one. This is the next future generation things. So this already shown. So now, can we afford to give this kind of pedestrian requirement in our footpath? I think I'm very difficult in the present day. And the 25, 50 years, we're unable to give this kind of roadside furniture, roadside pedestrian facilities, because if you give this kind of very nice, beautiful wooden uh, sit-outs sit here, the next day it will be in some other's house, which we don't want to give at this point of time because the generally what it happens, the good facilities, we are unable to reach to the public, reach to the common man because we are not still matured enough to use such things. So now even neatly underground subways, neatly planned, prepared in other countries by see how the walkways are given to the underground. They can give in India, we give more preference for the advertisements. We give the public crossings also not very perfect. It is people to climb without any lifts and other facilities also. Skyworks is again very thoroughly made. Roof give everything. A person can use the, the escalators can be used in that. See now in Vietnam, such a small city, cycle population is more. How beautifully they gave a cycle track separated from the Boeing vehicle track. Why we should not do this will not cost more also because the dearth of not the planner, dearth of the willpower of the government, willpower of the authorities, willpower of the administrations. Because the cyclist also should be given safe walk from the major traffic, cars and buses or motorized transport. See, the vehicle to climb a ramp, this is very, very important. If we have a steps here, the two-wheeler, the cycles, bicycles cannot cross it or jump on the steps here. They have to use the ramps, which is not at all existing in Indian roads. It's not again, not Indian road. And this is a London road. London's roads are very, very, very narrow, voltage city, one of the oldest city in the world. So even such cases, the cycles, they made a good way, even car parking also given. The remaining very neatly, they're given for one-way traffic also. So parking is also a different challenge. We have to take consideration uh, this is very important. See, the other countries, very, very, uh, even the developed countries, the parking also made, but the, not at the cost of vehicle motion or vehicle movement. Vehicle movement also very important. Parking also given because they don't have any other place. Any other space is not there. Some vehicles are parked on the road also, but generally it is very largely and generally and important Consideration will be no parking should be allowed on the road. This is also they call a whole city. The parking they want to remove in the place. See, parking space is there. Nowadays, four-wheeler car parking is 2.5 meters by 5.5 meters. Unfortunately, the builders now also they are giving 2.2 meters by 5 meters. Nowadays, everyone goes for a bigger car and SUVs, XUVs and all. So now there is a need and demand for 2.5 meter by 6 meters also. But we are not giving so much. The vehicle will be protruding outside. This is where the problem starts. Whenever you give bus parking, we will not give sufficiently for bus parking also. This is where always we compromise 
the things also. And in addition to that, always in the parking spaces we have to give for physically abled, otherwise parking space also a 5% Supreme Court order is also there. So this we are not at all giving any other government buildings at all. Immediately government is building and even private building, private apartment, private shopping complexes and private malls and IT companies, community, all these things should follow minimum 5% percent physically able otherwise and the 10 percent for electrical vehicle charging points this is very important so lighting marking everything should be given ramp should be also quite considerable one in 12 should be given not don't give compromise the ramp to one in eight it is very very dangerous very difficulty so obviously one in 12 to one in 12 is minimum recommended for the ramps also mlcp are also given there here this is how the parking space should be painted so that the people to understand, follow it. If we give, they will follow. If we don't give anything, they will try to park everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. So always try to give a good road. Marking should be given. So now, so parking solutions. Removing roadside parking, loading and loading should be removed. The human activity should be closed. So at least up to 9 o'clock, we have to ban all the parking on the road. Corporate development authority should be take care of this one. Any corporation is the main culprit for this. The buses, autos, cabs must be parked in the base plant also. They start parking on the road itself. So all these things we have discussed here. See, nowadays, in all the developed countries, we are giving parking without spoiling the garden, without spoiling any parks also. Bangalore is full of parks. Any other city is full of parks. To solve the parking problem, we can also plan the parking under the ground without touching a tree or without touching any grass also. We can plan under the ground. All the street road parking vehicles in a Bangalore road or any other road can be pushed or pulled to the underground parking system and roads become very clear. So people who park their vehicle can be charged for the development and construction of this parking space. This is a very, very classic good example for Bangalore, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bombay, and Ahmedabad to follow because we're finding it areas uh, not at all sufficient for us. So hence, the roadside parking should be removed and can be introduced below the parking levels, uh, sorry, below the park, so that without spoiling the park also, parking can be given. See, under one, we, children can, play, people can cross, IT buildings, shop, so you can have parking also below here and chargeable here, automation charging here, units. So this is how we can plan. So we can, Indian years are, Indian Indians very, very good, strong with fundamental. Why we should not do this way? So this is the only way how we can tackle for the future parking system. Otherwise, entire roads, we find parking lots, entire road for the future. Please take it now itself. You advise whenever you get an opportunity, you become advisor, you become planner, you become designer. So that's don't allow any parking on the road. Road is meant for traffic. And also we occupy one third to two thirds space for the parking only. Please be watch out, be cautious. See, and the parking will be a multi-level car parking. It's a temporary parking system, which can be completely constructed within a day. So this can be done very quickly and automation lifts will also be there. It can be lifted also and it can park also. And this is the modern day parking systems, public parking, protected columns will be protected also. Otherwise people will come and hit to the columns only. So we have to park it in such a way, safety is also given in preference. The, all the ramp, ramp details, dimensions are discussed here. It's a beautiful car parking system from Dubai. See the, how neatly they prepare the, the, the roof also, roof. So that roof, nothing is there. In India, we put AC roof and this roof, that roof, wastewater roof, and also light connections, everything will be there. So how neatly they can make it. People love to go to such places and park it on the ground or the underground. And pay, of course. Paying, when people will have to pay for it, pay for the convenience. So these things also should be taken care for giving good parking layout and automation indicating where he parked also, where he parked, which bay is parked. 
by the time he come to the he collect the car he might have forgotten so he had to take automation here sensors we had to use it how to identify these vehicles in the crucial systems this is a modern system this called as auto parking or this automation of the parking system it is human less activity people can go there when labor will come take the car driver pick up the car and go away particularly this is very much needed when the people in need of it urgently or emergency because doctors particularly they want to go for operation people want to go for jobs they need not go for parking wasting the time looking for the parking spaces they can easily go into the thing uh, lever will come play along with the plate the plate will take the car and driver will go pick up the uh, coupon or the card and go away for work immediately the car automation will be there we take the car it is called robotic car car parking it takes a particular level and put the car there when the evening hill returns to pick up the car the entire car can be washed out if you want to keep it very clean this is how it will be done different levels cars can be parked is already there in uh, the places like even cochin a small city in cochin compared to bangalore and delhi they have automation park so international technology india also does this job so this is the human robotic parking the entire forward parking constructed for in hospital the people will go inside pick up the car and come back without any wasting and evening they'll go at the back side again use the same car for taking out the car the car come with a clean way a neat car will come into picture later this is the indian pattern see how many tubes how many this uh, what you call pipes are there how it looks so early ugly and also lot of water leakage happen people never interested to get into the thing it is the best way see this is way how your good road marking can help every road driver to follow a road user to follow stop line everything on both sides of the road he can stick on to the lanes also first give the infrastructure facility then you ask the driver put for a fine when it does not use it. and in the night time how beautifully road is visible here you can see here see this is not in india of course unfortunately i have captured one of the photo in denmark also you can see so many sign boards the sign board itself misleads the driver road user when you want to read all the sign board you have to park the vehicle safely for half an hour or 30 minutes read all the boards and then you follow the boards and neither finally he cannot follow any this instruction also so always there should not be more than one or two sign boards more the sign boards more the complication so this is the way how the road should be every inch of the road in china japan korea all marked see if the road marking is like that people will send them do any mistakes or violate the rules give the facility then make them to use it see the road how beautifully nice it looks like a runway it is not a runway it is a highway road and pavement edges red lights lane marking yellow lights how beautifully the road lights these are two yellow lights we can put two red stars also also and which is the chevron lights chevron sign board with night times how it looks day time the night time road reflects better than the day time because they are constructed the paint using the thermos <coughs> thermoplastic paint with glass beads the glass beads is nothing but make us to reflect it right this is all night time day time see the our highways we have to use the white or yellow road sets on the lane and red you can use for the pavement edges and pavement edges there are two tight edges of pavement this side this side pavement and center lane we can use the white and stripes also so this is one way of indian way of using a tar drums after using the tar when we don't get any other sign boards quick sign board we are using the empty tar drums we mark by stickers See, but no doubt it is can be used for temporarily for its reflection during night times yeah this is how a curve chevron board in night times how it reflect chevron boards indicating the turning otherwise the accident will take place there only see the chevron boards chevron boards here night time reflecting 
board reflection stands. So this helps the driver have a safe turning moment also. So this is the Chevron again in a hill road, which is very, very important to the gradient. So how nicely, beautifully made in other countries, of course, not in India. So this is again, this is India, of course. We can have the turning also indicated by the road display. So here an important one more slogan, accident do not happen accidentally, but they are caused. Accident, who will cause the accident? The driver or the road or the vehicle, the three or the environment. But anyway, accident do not happen accidentally as generally believed, but their cause will be for these things. So these are all the smart cities, of course, which also helps for the uh, land use planning. So this is how the road should be in the smart city should look like. We, unfortunately, we wanted to, uh, fortunately, we wanted to do the Amravati, the first smart city in India, which have been accepted. Later on, the government, for the reason not known, they have stopped also the smart city firm. This is the intermodal transfers. The same place like Majestic, we are planning the metro rail transportation, we have the bus transportation, we have the other transportation also for people here. So the same area will be used for intermodal transportation or transfers. So this is how TTMS has been considered in Bangalore now, the traffic transportation uh, uh, things, uh, centers, management centers. So this is how modal splits will be there, other countries also. This is how other countries will have intermodal uh, things also in Italy and all. Then pedestrians can walk easily on the dedicated tracks also. This is what the electric buggy we are creating within the campus for the safety. This is auto rickshaw, electric auto rickshaw with the gas to which already come now, the market running. And this is the LED. This number also can be changed to 25 if they want it. If they change it to 15 kilometers per hour also if they want it. So this has the facility for changing as well as called as the solar display also. And we have a camera fitted to a, this light system also. See, this is a pedestal, the cyclist also, how beautifully we have made. Even the cyclist want to go to the road, you come back to this cycling track. That's how we have to attract them. A beautiful, I don't know what is the hole meant for that. Maybe bullets they are planning also. So in such a case, the cyclist marking, marking, everything is given. He can use the cyclist track comfortably. See, underway of cycling track, because if you don't put any bollards, the two wheelers also will go in this. So hence to prevent two wheelers to use the cycle track, which is empty most of the time, to prevent it, we have to put the bollards there. So this is what a smart cross cover, even though this is solar LED is planted, and this is what we look for the public for the car instead of police traffic police. Very much it flashes, people can cross, the vehicle can stop. If it crosses the yellow, caution, white, go safely, red means stop. So this is what is expected for the future. We don't want to stop at all with any vehicle. The vehicle should keep on moving. Let it go to hell. We are not bothered. This is what it should be. This is the future. It is. So thank you. Now we, uh, I will hand it over back to our uh, organizers. Uh, so uh, the team is there. They are well qualified, understandable, and good teachers also there. They will take it now. Finally, I'll say protect your environment. And thank you all once again. Uh, so this is how the road signboards, greenery should be there. Have environment friendly road. We can adopt it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that exhaustive presentation you have given with the tagline, accidents do not happen accidentally, but they are caused. It was a very great yeah. tagline. Uh, we engineers uh, uh, have to work towards it. And uh, the word accident is surely not for us. Uh, the forum is open for any questions or queries. You can or ask anything on traffic transportation. Participants, not only to the lecture. Yeah. The participants can uh, uh, put on their questions either in the form of chats or directly they could uh, ask, sir. Okay. I would like to uh, read out uh, some questions. Uh, I mean, these are answered. These are the questions which are, which are answered. Uh, any other questions, new questions? 
the participants are open to ask. No, it was an exhaustive presentation, so I don't think there would be any questions. <laughs> uh, but sir is always available and al always helpful whenever uh, any participant or anyone uh, has a query or wants to know. Any questions? OK. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you Thank for you. being with us. We really appreciate the time you took for our program. We are grateful for your presence. Uh, you have shared and given us insight on the thoughts on the traffic systems as well as transportation engineering. Your advices and suggestions are the need of the R and the traffic dim as on today. You have spoken uh, something about the basics about the road hierarchy, the virtual vertical walls, the uh, virtual horizontal walls, and also the subways, skywalks, and so many basics as well as some of the expertise in. Uh, detail. So you advise us and suggestions are the need of the hour. Uh, we felt you talking like a teacher and also a subject expert when you started with the basics from the right of way. We have had an enlightening, enlightening and uh, entertaining presentation on the road systems about hierarchies, parking problems and their potential solutions. So we as coordinators and the Department of Civil Engineering RIT as a whole. Thank you for this informative session. It is really worth mentioning and uh, uh, considering ourselves to be very lucky to have such a towering personality who doubles as an expert in traffic engineering for our faculty development program. We wish to listen, uh, listen to you, sir, more and more uh, over the years and get ourselves updated with your expertise in the near future. So on behalf of our participants, and also Ramaya Institute of Technology. Please do accept our profound, profound thanks once again for taking out the time for us for this session and have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much, sir, yes, for sir. all the help, guidance, and uh, sparing so much of time. I can understand the time is also very important. Yes, yes. Probably one hour, 15 minutes I've taken. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we have our beloved uh, head of the department, uh, Dr. Ayi Venugopal, who wish to interact you uh, with you for a minute or two. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Dr. Ven Gopal. Very good morning. Yeah, very good morning, sir, for you also. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Sriyari, sir, thank for you. being thank with you. us and have a nice thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm good at that guy.